And to the messenger, the congregation of Laodicea, write, thus says the amen and faithful and true witness, the ruler of creation of God, creation of God. Now, I know some of your Bibles may put on a little different way. But uh, to each congregation, Messiah starts this letter by describing himself in a unique way. Here he describes himself as the Amen. This word means the faithful one or true one. It is a word used for a response. This congregation was not making a right response to the revelation of God. Their lives were not uh, in truth with God. About Yeshua, John said, the word became flesh. And he, Yeshua, perfectly, perfect and completely responded to the plans of God for his life. The ruler of creation, God, Messiah, Yeshua, has always existed, is eternal. He's not just in the future, not also not also in the past. He is not just in the future, but also in the past. He is preemptive over all creation. That's in John 1, 1 2. In verse 15, I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were cold or hot. I know your works, that you are either cold or hot. God is again evaluating what we believe is seen in the way we have behaved. This congregation does not have passion or strong commitment. It is bearing out a faithful response to God, God's will and purpose. This is what's going on right now in this world, in this country. Most people nowadays, they're lukewarm. Most churches are lukewarm. Most places, I mean, most people, they just go to pacify their conscience. This congregation does not have a passion or strong commitment. Then verse 16, but but you are lukewarm, either hot or cold. I will vomit you from my mouth. These people make God sick. Spiritually, they are disappointing. A great disappointment to God. I would hate to have the God feel that about me in any way, shape, or form. I mean, we've got to have a true, passionate love to God. Or we don't have a good relationship with Him to begin with. You can't just go to church once a week or twice a week or three times a week and expect that to be good with God. You've got to go 24 7 with God. You know, pray without ceasing. Doesn't mean that you have to sit around and pray all day. But whatever you do, think of God. Talk to him. You know, keep him in mind. Keep him in the back of your mind always. You know, no matter what you're doing. You know, and he through the Holy Spirit will guide you. In verse 17, because you have said, I am rich, and I have found power, it's authority, and lack nothing, but you do not know that you are miserable, repulsive, poor, blind, and naked. And that describes most people today. They don't even know it. They don't realize that they are. 
their evaluation of the self, their self is based on earthly standards of measurement. Many people today believe that if they are financially secure, then God must be pleased with them. Your finances have nothing to do with how God, God sees you. Yeah, they think they've got their own power so that they can have they have the ability to accomplish what they own desire. I know when I'm my, one of my last jobs, I worked for General Motors in the offices. And my boss, which was he was extremely smart. Of course, I talked to him about God. He says, My brain is so smart that I can't comprehend God. I mean. It's just a shame, you know? It's a shame that anybody would ever think like that. But he wouldn't, he wouldn't listen, you know? If he was, his family was Catholic and that was it, you know? And, and just being Catholic is just enough to pacify his conscience, that's all, you know? But it's a shame. God has found five flaws in this particular congregation. This number speaks, which is lacking. They are poor in the things of God, fruit, power, and character of God. They do not see things from God's perspective, so they're blind. Naked has to, has to do with the same. They're blind and naked. In verse 18, I counsel you to buy, to acquire from me gold refined with fire, on account that you shall be rich in white garments, and that you should cover yourselves, that no one might see the shame of your nakedness. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, on account you shall see. Messiah is the only one who can bring righteous charge to our lives. Are we interested in the counsel of God? Fire remo removes impurities. He wants to remove those things from our lives that are impure or in conflict with his character. We need to be rich in good deeds not bank accounts. Now, good deeds cannot save you, but you will be judged on your good deeds later on in heaven for any prizes or crowns that you may require. And then also, if you're saved, if you're truly have a relationship with God, you're going to do good, de good deeds because that's part of God's character. You're going to talk about him. You know, this congregation is not correctly dressed correctly. According to the rabbis, someone is naked. They are lacking good, good deeds, faith and observance. Those in white garments have displayed the truth of God in their lives. When we have the character of God, we will be in, we will appear white to him. It is significant that the final exhortation to this congregation has to do with vision. We need to see things clearly from God's perspective. You can't look at them from our perspective. And especially this Western society that we live in, it's totally different than what God's perspective is. And it's unfortunate that we have so many tool of earth playthings nowadays that we don't have to look at it from God's perspective.
I mean, it's it's God will bless us if we do have the God's relationship with God. But like I said, it has to, nothing to do necessarily with bank accounts or anything else. It could be good health. It just could be happiness, joy. But a true relationship with God is the ultimate thing to go through. Then verse 19, those who I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be diligent and repent. God see it sets things in order. We need to ask him to reprove, reprimand, and discipline us so that we can change to become pleasing to him. That's not a very good uh, thing that we want to be done. We don't want God to discipline us. We don't want to be pruned, as some scriptures put it. We don't want to go through the fire. At the same time, if we do, it brings us to God. It brings us closer to him. It brings us to, closer to the way he wants us to be. Discipline, if we are trained by it and obedient to it. That's what discipline does. It helps us be transformed into the image of his son. Yeshua, Jesus, is who I look for or look at because I'm a disciple of his. We all are disciples of his. So we want to do what Jesus did. He's, he's the author and finisher of our faith. And the way he operated and the way he did things, that's what we want to do. We don't run from God's discipline, but we use it as instructions from God. I don't run to being disciplined by God, but at the same time, you know, I don't like saying, ouch, 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 and it hurts. But in the long run, you're a whole lot better person for it. In verse 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come up, come to him, and I will dine with him and be with him. He's knocking at every one of our hearts, every heart out there. God says, I wish that everybody would be saved. And if we, we hear a knock and we allow him to come in, that's all we got to do is open the door. Jesus, come on in. Let me learn of you. Yeah. I use that scripture a lot of times when I'm dealing with a child. Um, you can explain salvation for me. I use that scripture mm -hmm. that the Lord does not have any heart to do it. And I have to do it. I don't think it's going to be pretty fun when they seem to understand that mm. more than if you go through Sparks Road or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Doctor's appointment. Okay, well, you know, Understand those things. Hi, granddaughters. Okay, they interrupted the venerable teacher, Mr. Jeffrey. Well, we're at the uh, final church right now. Oh. 
And we got to the final church. Okay. That's right. We're just about done with the final church. This lukewarm church. Yes. Couldn't see anything like today, is it? Oh, no. 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 <laughs> I got my pen. Okay. Um, then in verse 21. And the one who overcomes, I will allow him to sit with me upon my throne, just as I also have been victorious, and I sit on my father's throne. Good intentions don't bring about a change. It's only through intimacy with God that we can overcome and overcome leads to change in our lives. You can't just have good intentions about doing something. You've got to actually do it. You've got to actually accept Yeshua Jesus into your heart. You've got to start reading his word, praying, and be in fellowship. Uh, fellowship. Fellowship. <laughs> People, <laughs> people, believers, and you got to make sure that the believers that you're having fellowship with line up with God's word exactly, because there's so many false teachers out there. It's a promise of God. it's a promise of God. And we will have the authority to rule with Messiah. Now, what do you think ruling means? Lording others over others. Okay. I think, I, I think it's governing. Isn't it uh, more of a government? Yeah, we're going to be governing people, guiding people. We're going to rule and reign with God. With Christ. With Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, by what rules are we going to rule with them? You know, God doesn't change. And when we rule and reign with God, we're going to be going back to the Ten Commandments. And some of the other things that God has you know, for us to do. I think we're going to be pretty much vegetarians during the millennium. Although they are going to do sacrifices. But, um, you know, I think you people that love your bacon and things like that, you better get your fill of it on this side. <laughs> <laughs> there will be nothing of that stuff uh, <laughs> with Christ. Well, no, we're really certain about that. I'm, I'm just thinking, to the original the commandment, you think yourself in you know, that, right? If you know what I'm saying? Uh, they have instead of the ten, but they're anywhere from seven to twelve. There are six hundred and thirteen in the Tanakh. That's because the people wanted more answers. The time of the ten, Moses died. Clarify this. Clarify that. It had to be simple, like Jesus said, which is love your Lord, your God. Right. With all that, that is the one thing. That's why he's had it with the people. That um, that apparently calling them to die, but they were so fast because they just wanted them to do the in their heart, and they knew who God was. They just chose not to. Mm -hmm. So that was one. The other one is love others as you love yourself. That's right. So and that, on these two, hang there. all the rest of them. Yeah, all the rest are in there. So all the rest of them can feed back to those two. Those two commandments. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I mean, even with food, I mean, you know, God even told Noah, I mean, you take certain food, a certain one of these animals, you know, 
clean and unclean. Yeah. So, you know, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, I don't think we'll get into any of that stuff that, yeah. you'll, you know, but because that's kind of getting off the, off the subject a little bit, but um, I still think you better get all the bacon that you want in on this side. <laughs> And all the shrimp and lobsters and things like that. And then he ends this church thing with um, verse 22. He has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the congregation. He says that a lot of times, you know, he who has an ear. We've got to pay attention to what God is saying. We can't use our voice. We can't, we got to make sure that we, we're not hearing Satan's voice or our voice. We got to hear God's voice. And it's through the Holy Spirit that is in you that you will hear God's voice. Okay. Any questions on Laodicean? Like I said, I mean, that's that church that's out there right now, most of them. Although all the churches, you're going to be able to find, I think, it's Bishop, when he gets back and gets to teaching again, he's going to. There's some of all churches out there right now. Some of all the churches. All the churches are represented in some of the denominations and everything else that you see out there. We got too many churches. Some like it's hot, some like it's cold. Oh, I know. I, I... Yeah, they've got. Yeah, I know. I won't do that. <laughs> now, we know there's a lot of problems with being Catholic, but that's beside the point. Okay. Um, okay. Let's get into chapter four. There are problems with. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's more, I think, it's a body. Well, I mean, I'm thinking for a church. I don't know anything. I just started going to different churches, different combinations. And if you want that, that leader to get there, they nailed it. It's just Bible. And then you do another one, and they are way off. So yeah. it, each one was an. It's, it's very different. It depends upon the leaders that are that are there. Yeah, um, but um, leaders are human. Mm -hmm. So as much as I love our church that we're in right now, you know, you can find fault with it because it because it's human beings in there, and we're all sinners. You know, I mean, we got three pastors. I mean, you know, so <laughs> yeah. I mean, so you know, you. They're human beings too, you know. So you're going to find fault with any of them, but uh, I love our church and I love, you know, the, the pastors we've got. They're better than anything else I've seen out there. So I'm sticking with it. <laughs> yep. Okay. okay. Let's go to uh, chapter four. In verse 1. And it came about after these things, and I looked, and behold, a door opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was the sound of a trumpet speaking to me. It said, come up here, and I will show you what will be afterwards. Many scholars apply this incorrectly mythology to interpret the rapture. This verse here is for John only. It's specific to John. It's John receives an invitation to go to heaven and to see things from God's perspective. And to have things revealed to him, open up. Like I said, this is specific to John. It's not for anybody else. It's not for the church. 
This is just for John. <laughs> Is he what? Well, he, in a way, he is because he wants to show John all these things that are about ready to happen. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's going to happen in the latter days? At the end times, which we're in. <laughs> Yep. Um, the yeah. great throne room in heaven. Huh? The great throne in heaven. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, because there's not yet, all you see is God. You see, or God, John, 24 elders and living creatures. Um, you don't see a massive body of people yet because they are not there yet. All you see is God and John and 24 elders, angels, and living creatures. Now, 24 elders. Who are they? Most theologians say there are 12 disciples and a representative from the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the most common thought of who those 24 elders are. Hmm? I think in 5-9, well, they are all heavenly beings because they've all been. Yeah, the new. Well, they died and gone to heaven. Have, but they don't have the new bodies yet. Oh, they glorified the bodies. Yeah. Right. That was one that, you know. Yeah, it's just when you read five now and then you uh, it, kind of, it brings up the, the four the elders again in here, but they're different um, than than the, than the actual elders of the tribes. Okay, yeah. well, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, well, in verse now, in verse 2, <laughs> let's go back to 2. In a moment, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne appeared in heaven. And one who sat upon the throne. Revelation purpose is to tell us what must take place or the throne of God in heaven to come and be established on earth. In the holy city, Jerusalem, when that throne comes down to earth, it, it inaugurates the kingdom of God. It tells us what next takes place, the throne of God in heaven to come and to be established on earth into the holy city Jerusalem. When the throne comes to earth, it ignore, it, it, it begins <laughs> the kingdom of God. In other words, the throne that the throne that they're going to be building, which will be the third third temple. God's going to have to do away with it and have this long come down from heaven and it will take its place because it'll be defiled and it won't be what God wants. It's just a temporary throne. So the throne from heaven will be coming down at that point.
throne appears appeared in heaven, we should not expect justice in this age. Believers are the only force for justice and righteousness in here and now. God the Father is the one sitting on the throne in verse in this verse. Initially, Yeshua is depicted as being near the throne, on the right of the throne, in the midst of the throne, and then later he is the one who is on the throne. This description gives us an idea of a transition that's taking place. In, in Daniel 7.14, we see that all authority, glory, and power that belongs to God the Father will be inherited by God the Son. Are you totally confused? Okay. Then in verse 3, it says, And one who is sitting, his appearance was the appearance of jasper, green and red stone. And a rainbow was around the throne, and its appearance was an emerald. Green is synonymous with life. Red with means of life, redemption, the shedding of blood. In verse 4, and around the throne are 24 thrones, and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, and they were clothed in white garments, and golden crowns were upon their heads. White garments depicts purity, an outcome of redemption. So they had to have bodies because they got white garments on. In verse 5, and from the thrones went 24, were forth, went forth lighting, lightning, thunder, and sounds. The seven torches of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, if you want to look at the seven spirits, they're in Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. In Exodus 28, verse 18, on Mount Sinai, these lightning, thunders, and sounds were seen. Fifty days after Passover, God had brought the children of Israel here. The people had been warned to prepare themselves. But when God spoke and began to move forward, they panicked because they were not adequately, adequately prepared. <laughs> the children of Israel failed that day. In much the same way we see the imaginary repeated here, God brings his rule, throne, to presence into this world. Well, there's God will be here in this world at that time. We will be prepared for this or we will fail like Israel did in Mount Sinai. That's what it means by it. It says Israel failed. Mm -hmm. Which is they couldn't wait for they couldn't wait for six weeks for Moses to get back. Yeah, and they didn't want to go near the mountain, you know, because they knew they they want to get near God. Yeah. So uh, I'm just trying to figure out that uh, that one that the the, the, the heaven uh, so the throne the throne of God is like I guess essentially the center of the universe, which. Um, which consider that to be bang guard would be in the silence like they can do the same bang guard. But so the, they say God's kingdom comes to earth as it is in heaven. So it's still one and the same. It doesn't just depart from heaven, it's both places. So it will depart from heaven and come to earth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. His throne will come to earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, because okay, because the temple of God was in heaven, 
And uh, remember, uh, Mo, um, yeah, Moses saw the saw the uh, saw it in heaven, the temple of God, right? Because God told him to make things according to what you see. So the throne of God is going to come to earth and take take place of the third temple and the and the throne there. Totally. That's after. That's after the millennium. Okay. Uh, because there, after the millennium, during that time, then there will be no, there will be no throne. Okay. Because God the Father and God the Son will be with, with us. Okay. Kind of shows too, you know. That's the way I read it in you know in the end of in the end of, end of Revelation. Sometimes when you say this, I hear them say, but, but we know he is one. I, I know, we know you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, yeah. they're the same. Our minds can't totally comprehend it. So don't you know? Don't try to make complete sense of it. It's just like our, our minds can't conceive of no beginning and no end. Our minds can't wrap that around it. You know. So those are the hard questions when you witness to somebody and they start asking a question. When you're trying to explain something, but you don't understand the question. Yeah. Well, then you say by faith you've got to believe these yeah, things. Yeah. No, yeah. but also you gotta remember that so John was like he God Jesus the because he he was given the wisdom and he wrote it down in John one one. Right. If, and that I have that one. That's if you can explain that, you know, in the beginning, you know, you had the, the spirit moved over the from the, you know, the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Then and then you also heard a voice. A voice said, let there be. And then so that that's a, that's a word. So I like, well, no words. So I I know people that when it sounds like a class, very class or a right class at any point. Yeah. And and I'll hear the one of the last words that people would have said. And then a lot of society. And uh, there's only a couple that are actually saying, you know, cry out the sight, cry out to God. So their heart and mind is where that word is. It's linked. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why we be careful about our words. That's right. So um and, and so that's what the word that voice that came out not the thoughts behind it because never Jesus in the room praying and asking your father give me wisdom what do I do next because he's the word to the word became flesh and when you understand that 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 word became flesh he was always here because he was here, here in, the, in the in the fiery furnace he was here you know talking to when he, the burning bush is speaking that was Jesus, but not in the flesh yet. The word in the beginning was a word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word, and the word became flesh. Anyway, that's what explains that. It's the best way to do it. And, um, and, and then that makes people go, oh. It, it's only way I do I took people using water. You know, the ice cubes, but then I would start melting and just, you know, liquid and get solid liquid and steam. It's a good part. It's all water. But, so, understand what. Jesus told taught John and John Pendant is, is what I think is very good. Yeah, yeah. well, we're body, soul, and spirit ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we God made us in his image, mm -hmm. body, soul, and spirit. We've got flesh. We have a spirit that hopefully goes with God's spirit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then we have our own uh, own will. I mean, our own comes out in our voice. Yeah, our, our own minds, and you know, I know there's a lot of times I like to do certain things, but I don't do them anymore. Yeah, he didn't say that I'm going to make man and buy it. He's just going to try to make it. Mm -hmm. Body, soul, and spirit. Yeah. And it's hard to wrap your mind around it, yeah, some yeah. of these things. So you just got to, by faith, receive them. And that's what you got to, you know, tell other people that you, you know, if they want to get into that. Yeah. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. So 
It looks like it, it's really an awesome description of heaven, you know, what it currently is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. The same as rules present. Okay. In verse six, and before the throne was a sea of glass like ice. In the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures that had eyes before them and after them. The number four has to do with the world, north, south, east, and west. God is going to bring about a transition in all the world. They had eyes in front of them and behind them. Eyes have to do with intelligence or knowledge. They know everything. God will bring about, will bring this transition about with perfect knowledge. In verse seven, and the likeness of the first creature was like, was a lion. The second was an ox. The third, a face of a man. And the likeness of the four was a flying eagle. These creatures also mentioned in Ezekiel one, Four through 24. When a line is mentioned, it speaks of glory. An ox power. A man speaks with intelligence and wisdom. An eagle is that which is supernatural. These living creatures reveal very important characteristic of God to us. Majestic, glorious, powerful, all-knowing, and supernatural. This ability is without limitation. In verse 8, and to each one of the four creatures, there were six wings. All around them and before them, they were full of eyes. And they were never silent. Day and night, they said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, who was and is and is coming. These creatures, although not necessary seraphims, are alluded to in Isaiah 6, 2 and 4. The seraphim were angels, also had six wings. These seraphim also said almost exactly the same thing as the living creatures here. God's word is going to become holy by the fact that he is coming into it. God's word is holy, and we have to treat it that way. We can't just dismiss it as something off the cuff, so to speak. And each of these living creatures gave glory and honor and thanksgiving to the one who sat upon the throne and lives forever. The 24 elders fell upon their faces before the one who sits on the throne. And they worship the one who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, before I say, the elders are given a position of eldership because of a testimony. 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Here they demonstrate how we should respond to worship. You are worthy, O Lord, our Lord, to take honor and glory and power. 
for you have created all things and all things according to your will they were made. They called him Lord. He was the ruler of their lives. And then chapter four ends with worship, the chief characteristic of the kingdom of God. Worship is so important with God. So important. Even when we're by ourselves, you know, just to start worshiping God, that means a lot to God. If you've got worship music, put worship music on. You know? Good. I've heard been asked before that if I mean, God, does he need people to worship him? Well, why did he make Satan? Well, he actually made Lucifer. Well, Lucifer, the most yeah. wisdom and beauty of all the all the angels. He was he was he was he was, he was in charge of the of the um, of the music. Yeah. I mean, he had pipes coming out of him. I mean, he could make all sounds possible. God likes that. How did Lucifer come about? Huh? How did Lucifer come about? He was made, but he 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 he, he sinned. Name and name change. The deceiver or the why God created Lucifer. Sin created Satan. Yeah. So we use so those I, we use those terms in, interchangeably a lot, but. Uh, you know, it is the same person that God did make Lucifer first, and then when he sinned, it changed to Satan. Is what we all do. We all want to be in control of you know our lives. We all want to be our own God, or some people. More I don't. Than others. Some people more than others. I don't want to. Hang, I don't want to be anything like that. No. I bet at one time you wanted oh, to. Oh, one God. time I was in the world before yeah. I knew who Christ was. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. When it went mm -hmm. But that's why I'm a new creation now. Yeah. Old things have passed away, they're done and buried. And I don't take them up. No. I'm trying to hold people down to mm -hmm. see what God wants you to be when they keep reflecting on, on the old nature. Mm -hmm. Which I think is a statement that the woman looks in the ear to make it through those eyes. Oh, yeah. Hey, he still whispers in my ear, too. But I rebuke him as much as once I realize what's going on, I rebuke him. And uh, I, I ask God for forgiveness because I don't want those thoughts. I don't, I don't want anything to do with that anymore. Uh, it's all that has to do with the relationship with God Himself. Enabling us to see who God is, you know, and like I said, I mean, like I said, He does like worship, He does like praise and worship unto Him, you know, and to make sure we're praising Him and worshiping Him and not some other thing. Is the worship coming out right now? <laughs> well, and like you say, we have some of these other churches that just fall so far away, and that's a kind of category. I was just going to say that the worship song out now. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. Part of it is all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good with every breath that I am able. I will sing the good God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
um, we've got to make sure that every word, I mean, in these worship songs, because I've, I've heard of one of them in the church I went to go before I came over to Freedom Fellowship. And they were singing a song by, uh, I mean, it was put out by one of the main group to do groups. But if you look at the, listen to the words itself, it wasn't correct. It just sounded correct. I mean, it sounded good, and, and when you were and you're singing it, but what it actually said was not correct. You know, it said something like, you know, maybe God will do this, or maybe God will do that. No, there's no maybe with God. No, dude, at that phase. No, this is the mainline church. It was a good church, but they were singing some. You know, I asked yeah. you to look at the words you're saying, yeah. and they wasn't so. But I'm not there anymore, so. <laughs> no. Finding pastors that don't take God, take credit from God, that don't take glory to mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. and that's what this church has. And who, Bishop Sam, come back to Pakistan, mm -hmm. he, I, I was nervous because he could, I see a lot of people do that, and then they end up becoming kind of. Holy now, you know, he did. He came down from morning. Yeah, and now, just yeah. Bishop, me. Bishop Sam, he's a very oh, humble person, and he blown away by what God did. Mm -hmm. Um, just through him, he just had to be there to show up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's right. The humility that he demonstrates and is just is very good. And I, our other pastors doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't find any anything wrong with any of them. I no. mean. I, I, you know, I see some faults and the people. Yeah, the people and they go to the bathroom the same way I do. So, you know, <laughs> we all do stuff like that. I mean, but still, you know, of all the churches I've ever been in, this is probably one of the best ones, you know. I used to go to Brownsville Assembly God Church with Pastor Kilpatrick, and that was a good church too, you know. And uh, I trusted him very much too as a pastor and what he said, you know. So, and just outside of Portland, that's very good too. After the few grocery packages are in a hit list, mm -hmm. and see for hit list. Yeah. Because they go down to down to where the, all the writings went on and minister to the people down there. And you know, then there's another one that the street package basically, and you have to turn your heart. The African American people who just down that big time. And the French people are quite a you know, high explosive fireworks at the end of all the kids, and it still keeps going back. Yeah. So well, there's so much of that, it's, it's going to get worse and worse with this uh, anti Semitism yeah. that's yeah. going way out of proportion. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, some churches are still in replacement theology. I mean, they think they've replaced Israel. So, you know, yeah. they um, they do away with it, you know, and they're all for this anti-Semitism. And it's just, uh, yeah. well, you can't stand before, you can't stand before God and be against Israel. <laughs> you know, not when the Messiah is a Jew, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and okay. God never... You know, gave them up and <laughs> disowned them or anything. I mean, he chastised them a lot, which is fine. You know, he's chastised me a lot too, but uh, he still loves me more and more. That's all that counts mm -hmm. your love for him and his love for you. You know, it's amazing. Okay, we're going to go into chapter five now. Long as I've got some notes here, we can keep going on five for a while. Chapter five, verse one. And I saw on the right side of the one who sits on the throne a book, a scroll written on the inside and out, and it was sealed with seven seals. The tablet had the tablets uh, that had the Ten Commandments on them were also written on both sides. Like this scroll, and you're going to see Exodus on that, 
Both the scroll and the tablets are supernatural and connected to the character of God. The commandments of God reveal the character of God. How God would live if he were to become a man. And that's why we see in the Gospels how the religious leaders always tried to accuse Yeshua of sin. If they could catch him in a sin, it meant that he didn't reflect the commandments and character of God. A sealed scroll means it is locked up until an appointed time. Daniel was told to close and seal up what he had been told because it was not a uh, revelation of four at his time, but for the time of the end. The events in this seal scroll must and will take place before the establishment of the kingdom of God. Okay, first, you have a scroll with seven seals. What do you think the scroll is? What's written on it inside the night? A lot of the old theologian, theologians that I that I read about and everything, we, we think this is what the deed to the earth is. They've already won it back. But it's but it's it's gotta be have that it's gotta be opened up, the seals have to be broken for it to be executed. So I heard that because that because Adam and Eve decided they wanted to have the knowledge of good and evil and be just like God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they basically kind of appeal you know, to Satan. Yeah. Which is the, which is the because evil. even Satan couldn't offer to God to Jesus yeah. if he didn't if say if Satan didn't have authority, I mean yeah. on it. He couldn't have opened it. He so. couldn't have opened it. So, so like I said, it's not definite written here, but that's what a lot of theolog theologians, people that understand this stuff, <laughs> that's what they say, that uh, and it, it kind of makes sense that this is the deed to the earth. Mm -hmm. Have you heard what anything, anything different? No. But I haven't heard that one either. Okay, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, well, I like that yeah I, that's the most logical theory of what it is. Yes, it is. That you'd have to have Jesus, Yeshua, to open the seals. He's the only one that can do it. I didn't have to see it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's talking also about the religious leaders that always try to accuse Yeshua of sin. Yeshua never broke any one of the commandments. He did, all, however, break the rules and regulations that the rabbis have set down. Because rules and regulations of the rabbis are not, are not scripture. They're not Torah. They're not a law. They are theology. They are their opinions of how to keep this and how to keep that. When I studied, when I was an Orthodox and I studied with the rabbis, I studied them three days a week. We never studied Torah. We studied all the, you know, the other stuff that the rabbis hand down. The definition of how to do this and how to do that. And you've got theories upon theories upon theories. That's why even for the theory on, on, on the Sabbath, on how to do the Sabbath, would take all these books here in this you know, because they've got so many rules and regulations and, you know, and this is what Jesus came against. Not whether or not you can carry a pen on Sabbath or not. <laughs> I kind of remind them that, 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 that 
you know, the, the, but nowadays, it kind of reminds me of all the commentaries that are out there. Yeah. I mean, it all, you know, like if we just want to have a commentary on this factor, you know, there's hundreds of books written by like a whole other people that, you yeah. know, some, some of it's good. I mean, yeah. But, but, uh, it's, it's kind of the same thing. They were interpreting what the scripture said. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, even nowadays, some, some churches say, you know, well, women have to wear dresses. You know, no blue jeans, no cutoffs, and then, you know, that type of stuff, you know. That's not, that, that's, that's Satan at work already. That, that's, oh, that's Satan's doctrine and dogma for control. Satan's been working it's overtime in churches. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and, I found it, and that more and more, the more and more control mm -hmm. the other way. Yeah. Well, it gets you away from your, you know, there's nothing wrong with tradition. Yeah. As long as it doesn't break Torah, right. Right. you know, there's, there's these feasts and festivals coming up and things like that, and there's ways of doing it. But as long as it doesn't break or having to do with Torah, you know, the relationship with God, then they're fine. Right. But when they when they when they go against Torah, the Word of God, they go against the Word of God. That's what Jesus came against, and that's what you shouldn't do. That's just like when I was brought up Catholic. I mean, I remember saying that to me. When we went to church, we had a word of Catholic from the church. Yeah. And then by where I lived, it was like the church was in the house. My husband said, I was so scared. They they went off on a word of dresses being there. So that's. Well, I mean, I, I think because you are going to church and there and you're 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 going to you know visit God, so to speak, you know, I think you have to look nice. You know, but being nice, be nice looking to God is up to me. No, yeah, but he's, he's talking about your your you. Right. I think he's talking about your soul. Because there's something like nothing a great deal. You know, sound down please. Spiritually connected to God, church out of that by people from around the world in the middle of the middle of the middle of the night and country. And we'll tell you straight. And the people who wore the same clothes with those threads that falling off, but they stitch them back up as best they can and they come there. And they're I really well, that's all they have. But every part of the is very clear. Mm -hmm. So you know that's that 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 is going to be one thing I have to do is to do ten twelve hours a day, one day off, and that's when we just come together and worship God yeah. in the family. Yeah. So you know that's you know that's that's some people around the world. But that's your family. We can go to have that. Yeah, I need to keep it that. But. Yeah, you're coming the best you can. I mean, as far as you what you can do, you know, if you can't, like these kids, I mean, that's all they can do, then fine. You know, God accepts you as you are. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to get dialed up and you know, you can't not go to church be because you're not don't have enough bright clothes or you can't take a bath or whatever it is. I mean, you just honor God to the best of your ability. That's all. <laughs> Involved in them, 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 because in Orthodox Jewish religion, when a woman gets married, they shave her head. And then she's wearing wigs. And most of them, and those wigs look beautiful sometimes. And they're expensive. Well, you can tell. There's a lot of wigs out there. Well, my wife, my wife, I just recently got rid of. Uh, <laughs> That's what she did. She, that's what she did in the Orthodox community. She made wigs for him and fitted wigs. 
And we used to have the Orthodox come over and my wife in her back room, you know, because they can't be seen by anybody as, you know, without their, without their hair on, without the, without the wig on. They are covering. That's right. The wigs are a covering. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, but he just it was to show your subsidy and it was like, yeah, for them, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, there's different rules for women. And New Testament says that women are supposed to have their head, their head covered, you know, and uh. So the men aren't supposed to cut the men are supposed to cut their hairs, so it's not real long. <laughs> a lot of that have been some of the churches too. Yeah. So I mean yeah, it's not good church the folks that said that no need to be thinking about it. Just figure out my family's not Catholic. But you know, men had to get circumcised. And it turned out it was a pope. Long time ago, they can be circumcised, but Paul had to stop passing Peter because Peter told the Gentiles they need to get circumcised. He said, No, Jesus said he's the new covenant. That's not, that's gone. So that's going to be exciting. And Peter accepted the public view. That's going to be an exciting story. Peter was up to our and Paul was up to our That was, yes, all these little things that come in are, were, it takes away from God. I think that's what Jesus is getting upset. All these rules and stuff took away from that relationship personal, individual design relationship. Your heart's part, you know, your heart is individual. You know, if it's a for one time a week, one time a year to go to the temple or, or to a rabbi or a priest or somebody to, to be the intercessor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something I was young and dumb. I mean, I, I, that's the idea. Grab my kid, put him in, put him in a buggy, and go to the church. <laughs> that was the first place I go all the time. I'm like, and he knew always where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is what Jesus came against. I mean, he 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 pointed out, you know, that when the, the children, for instance, or the parents, you know, when they retire or die, you know, the money is supposed to go to the children. But the Orthodox says no, he's supposed to go to the temple. You know, and Jesus said, you know, that's where they've changed it. That's what Jesus came against. That kind of thing. Very yeah, he was he was really you know, Jesus. Really, what he rightly interpreted the law. Yeah. I mean, that's what he was always, he was correct on. Mm -hmm. But he was always rightly interpreted. Yeah. Yeah. And even you can have exceptions like like David, like we're talking about David's uh, men, you know, they were doing the, going through the wheat field and doing this to the wheat, you know, and then eating it, you know. And oh, you're not supposed to do that, you know. And Jesus said, David even took his, his his him and his guys with him. They ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat. You know, sacrificial priesthood. Yeah. So good. Well, you know, the, the priests are supposed to eat you know the freshest, and then they, you know, but 
yeah, the, the, the priest is supposed to eat that, but David gave it to his disciples. So it's got to come from the heart. You know, it's still back to a heart issue. You know, where are these laws coming from? And like I said, I mean, I with the, with the Orthodox, I mean, they they go off way off in left field on some of this stuff. Way off in left field, but it is what it is. So anyway, anyway, uh, let's see. This is for Becky, verse one. Now, the commandments reveal the character of God. Lock up to the end. And then verse 2, I looked and I saw a mighty angel calling with a great voice. Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loosen its seals? Angel is powerful, unique, and strong stronger than a typical angel. There's there's about five different types of angels in scripture. Um, uh, in the beginning... Angel different than a living creature? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, when God created the earth, the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God spoke 10 things into the beginning. When he spoke these things became a reality in this chapter. We see that in order for the kingdom of God to become a reality in this world, the scroll had to be opened. It has to be read. And as these words are spoken, they too will become into beginning into being. The kingdom will be like a second creation. That's when Zechariah 12, 1 and 2. And there was not a man in heaven, nor on earth, or underneath the earth, who could open up the scrolls or even look at it. There is no man who is worthy to open the scroll and reveal its message, so that what is written here can become reality. Left to ourselves, we are utterly hopeless, and the kingdom of God is out of reach. And verse 4 says, I cried with a great weeping on account that there was no one found to be worthy to open the scroll and to read from it or even look upon it. And one of the elders said to me, do not cry. Behold, the lion has conquered. It's victorious. Who is the tribe of Judah? the root of David, to open the scroll and to loosen its seals. Root of David, David is synonymous with the king's kingdom. Messiah, the son of David, is the root, the foundation of the kingdom. Only he can open the scroll. All hope of kingdom life and hope in ju of justice, righteousness, and peace rests upon Messiah Yeshua, Jesus. Yeshua is worthy to open the scroll. It is not only through him that we are made worthy before God. He who knew no sin took our unworthiness. Only through him can we become part of his kingdom. Any questions about that? In verse 6, I looked and behold in the midst of the throne between the four creatures and the elders stands a lamb like it was slain. And to him were seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent to all the earth. There are few words in the Bible worthy of the lamb used here is one associated with the Passover lamb. This tells us that what makes Messiah unique is not just that he is 
the Son of God, but that God's Son, but the, but the Son of God is also the Redeemer who did the work of redemption. We see that there is a case being made theologically to show that there is a connection between the kingdom and redemption. Without experiencing redemption, we won't experience the kingdom. Horns like the chauffeur ram's horn have to do with salvation. The chauffeur comes from the Hebrew word that means to improve, to change. Salvation leads to what God has provided, Messiah, to produce a perfect improvement in our lives. The eyes are intelligent and perfection. He knows all things perfectly. And he came and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who sits on the throne. And it came about when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the four elders fell before the lamb. And every man had a harp in his hand and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. I think that's kind of interesting that our prayers go up to God and they're in bowls. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Someplace in the old testament it said that the prayers the prayers are sweet incense. Mm -hmm. Um I forget where it says it, but I, that is correct. Um yeah. Revelations constantly tie him back to the old testament. Mm -hmm. uh, and salvation leads to what God has provided Messiah to produce a perfect improvement in our lives. And the eyes have to do with intelligent perfection. No, the the uh, show for hands has to do with uh, improvement or change. I know they mentioned. That's why I look back at Zechariah mm -hmm. one eighteen talks about four horns. Yeah, yeah, the silver. I have silver horns, and then they have the ram's horns. Yeah. And then nowadays they got that real long one. You know, which isn't from a ram, but it's uh, it's from another animal. Spiral one. Yeah, the spiral yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Like the one Izzy has, mm -hmm. but the ram's horn is just a real short hand, like up this. But now it's in charge. And I tried to blow and learn how to blow it, and I can't. <laughs> you can't blow your own horn. I can't blow my own horn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think they're going to stop there. It's a lot. It's a lot of digestion yeah. in over a week. <laughs> Let's go back and do some more research. Yeah, back and research and digest it and redigest it. And... But um... so the thing on, on Revelation five nine where. Uh, and then it's not the 24 elders. 24 elders are mentioned above it in eight. Nine talks about when he uh, it talks about the lamb coming to, you know, the blood of the man, and, but it doesn't mention the elders. The elders are before that. So I don't know that they are men, and they don't even have to be the two. So, you know, the originals of the 12 tribes, which had a lot of problems, uh, each of them, except for one. And then uh, and the disciples, it could be maybe, but then there was one that Job. Jonah, Job, Jonah. Yes, there are a lot of things that, that came long before Enoch, who just walked with God and then walked right up to heaven. He was first out, 350 years old. Mm -hmm. Walking around him and then 
or Ezekiel writing the steering board. Yeah, so I, I don't know that. That's why there's a theory because there's 12 and 12, that's 24, so that doesn't really matter. What matters is these beings, or humans, or former glorified humans, or bodies, that they're worshiping God. That's the whole thing. Yeah, that's, that's bottom line. Is they're yeah. worshiping God, and that's what we want to be. We want to be found worthy enough to sit there, to be to heaven and worship God. You know, and he says that that stuff works too. We aren't going to be bored. Yeah, we're not going to sit around on on clouds and singing kumbaya. You That's know, all good. <laughs> <laughs> he's got work for us. He's got well, we call it work, but it really won't be work. I mean, it'll be something we'll all want to do. Yeah, you know, but it'll be different things that God will That's have us do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, oops. Stop recording. Let's see.